Now that you have been stretched to think outside the box about catechetical preaching, the final video gives an example of a conventional Sunday morning sermon in which the congregation is catechized on the sacrament of holy baptism, utilizing the narrative of the baptism of our Lord from Matthew 3. Reverend Michael Larson of Luther Memorial Chapel, Shorewood, Wisconsin, preaches this sermon and employs many of the elements you have been discussing from the 20 Theses on Catechetical Preaching. One final point, the practice of the art of catechesis, while shaped by the different personalities and experiences of the catechist, is nevertheless grounded in Jesus' preaching, the way he engages his hearers in the call to repentance and faith, and the way in which God's word and faith is passed on to every generation of baptized Christians. No two preachers are alike. You cannot be me, nor would I want you to be. You must be true to yourself, your own experiences, and how the Word of God has shaped you and your understanding of the faith so that you can communicate God's Word faithfully and authentically to others. Reverend Michael Larson has a very different personality than I, and his life has given him different experiences than I have had. But the timeless truth of God's Word, the pattern of sound words set forth in the Catechism, and the comfort of the Gospel of Jesus Christ is the same. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's varied grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that, in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, he put it pretty simply when it comes to baptism. He said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You see, to us poor sinners, heaven was closed. From the day the door was shut to Eden, the cherubim and flaming sword barred the way. Our first parents, they rose up in rebellion against the God of love. And so heaven barred its doors and we were shut out and we had only ourselves to blame. In sin and in bondage did we come into this world, and from our infancy we have been allied with the enemy, the devil. We have sinned against God, all of us. We have sinned against one another. We have hurt others by the way we have lived. Our thoughts and desires have been soiled by sin. As we confess, we justly deserve God's temporal and eternal punishment. Therefore, to us, heaven was closed. From the day when the gate swung closed to Eden and the cherubim stood guarding the gate with flaming sword. Jesus, he put it simply, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of our Lord, and we give special attention to what Jesus' baptism means in the lives of his Christians. In our gospel this morning, folks are confessing their sins at the Jordan River. They're being baptized by John for a baptism of repentance. But now, here comes the Holy Son of God down to that river. And he asks his cousin John to baptize him. John, he essentially responds, Are you nuts? I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. It is as if he is saying, Wait a minute. You are holy, and I am a sinner. You are the Son of God, and I am a sinful son of Adam. What need have you for baptism? What possible sins do you have to confess? But Jesus' answer says it all. Let it be so now, 
for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. You see, the key to understanding this day is to learn from John's bewilderment. Because he was right. Jesus, he had no need to be baptized. There were no sins to be forgiven. And unlike us, he certainly wasn't barred from heaven's gates. After all, he is the kingdom of heaven. But here is the wonderful, comforting, bewildering mystery of Jesus' baptism. That though he himself had no need to be baptized, he does it all for us. I want you to think back again to what all those folks were doing at the Jordan River. They were confessing their sins. But now, now for the very first time, one comes to step into that water, not to add his own sins, but to make them all his and to take them all away. Jesus, he enters the water with all the other sinners, not to make himself clean, but to make himself dirty. And that's the point. When John points to Jesus on the banks of the Jordan and declares, Behold, the Lamb of God, those are words jam-packed with meaning. Because he is our Passover lamb. He is our scapegoat. And when he steps into those waters, that's what he's embracing. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus is embracing the cross and all that came with it. Yes, he is promising to lay down his life for us, but also, as he said, to fulfill all righteousness. That is to be and to do and accomplish what we never could. To live a life of perfect sacrificial love. A sort of life that God intended for all of us when he created the heavens and the earth and man has his co-regents over his creation. When our Lord comes out of those waters, notice that the heavens are opened. Pay careful attention to that. The heavens are opened. The heavens that were closed by man's rebellion and unbelief, the heavens that were closed because of your sin and mine, but now, just look at how Jesus' baptism, the doors of heaven, they swing wide open. The Spirit of God comes to rest upon him as a dove, calling to mind the peace promised to Noah and his family after the waters of the flood. And the Father from heaven, he spoke, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Father is well pleased because there Jesus was carrying all of your sins away. He is pleased because in baptism Jesus was committing himself to the cross for you. The Father is pleased because the promise God made from the beginning was coming to its glorious fulfillment. And that by the power of his Son's resurrection, those doors would soon be swinging wildly open to the whole world. So what benefits does baptism give you? Well, as you pray in the catechism, it works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. And how so? Well, you see, in those waters, we see what we Christians call the blessed exchange, that in his baptism, Jesus, he took your rebellion, took your sins, and he made them all his own. He took everything ugly in you and made it his. He exchanged your sins for his perfect holy life. He exchanged your disobedience for his righteousness, your hideousness for his beauty. He exchanged your hell for his heaven. But what you really needed most was access to God, a way home, hope for the future. 
To us, heaven was closed. Cherubim and flaming sword barred the way. We had been aliens, exiles, and drifters. And so Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. But you are baptized. And do you see how wonderful baptism is for you? Because in your baptism, and I'm not just talking about something in the distant past, I'm talking about what you've got right here and right now. Those mighty doors of heaven, they swing wide open to you. And the cherubim angels barring the way sheathe their swords, and you are welcomed in. You are tenderly invited to enter. And the Father says of you, This is my beloved, my own child, with whom I am well pleased. That's right, in baptism, you've got God's perfect and divine approval. Know, therefore, that baptism is never an over-and-done deal. Never is. It keeps on flowing throughout your whole life like an artesian well, bubbling up and spilling over with forgiveness and life. In our first reading this morning, you got a nice little preview of what's all to come. With Joshua, the congregation of Israel, they crossed over the Jordan River right into the promised land. But what's that compared with our greater Joshua, Jesus, leading us all through baptism into the promised land of eternal life? In the name of Jesus, amen.